Hey guys, welcome back to Release the Craft and Priscilla here with a little tarot box unboxing and review. Not a tarot box unboxing. I am going to unbox this tarot box, but it's a tarot card unboxing because I'm going to remove the cards from the box. That's that's how words work. Um, <laughs> here we are with uh, the Urban Tarot. This is by Robin Scott, and I got this um, on my birthday, and I thought I would save it to share with you guys. Because we're like friends, right? So you want to you wanna see what I got for my birthday. It's a birthday haul. Uh, it's actually not a haul because I didn't get that much stuff. Um, personally. I mean, I bought a lot of cat stuff. But that wasn't relevant. I didn't buy a lot of witchy stuff. But I bought this because I like this. And surprisingly, um, or not surprisingly, you may know. Because I did do a city witch kit. I actually really love like modern witchcraft, urban witchery city witchery like all those things i really love and i'm really drawn to and i really love tarot decks that are modern witch inspired which seems like counterintuitive to the whole like witch theme in general because everyone sort of like gravitates towards you know the old witchy like you know the old witchy ways <laughs> and i'm like give me the new shit i want the current shit not the future shit because that scares me but like the the, what's happening right now I want that I want urban development city witchcraft like rebellious riotous gardening like warfare witchcraft and that's what I want <laughs> that's also what I want for my tarot decks and I actually really love that so I was really excited to pick this one up I had never heard of it and I just happened to see it and then I saw this image for the tower and was like need and then again like I looked at this one too this is the art card, and I was like, you, you can't not get a deck that has, like, modern artsy witch on it. Like, you have to get it. So we got it, and we're going to open it. This box is very hard to open. Um, I like the, like, subway map design. That is really cool. I hate, I hate this, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be mad about it. It's just the box was designed to fit the book, but the cards weren't designed to be the same size. And that's a design flaw. It bothers me. Um, oh, there's like a tarot app. That's interesting. I might check that out after this. Let's see. Here's the guidebook. And there are no photos, <laughs> which is fine. It's not a requirement. It's just a preference. Um, but it does look like a very comprehensive guide because, like, even in the... Um, the suits, like, that's a lot, that's a lot of words for minors, so I definitely like that. Look how long the tower page is, <laughs> just way down here, because <laughs> it's necessary. But this is cool, so there's, like, um, little notes about when the card, like, artwork was completed and who modeled for it, which is also very neat if you're interested in looking that up. Let's see, when did this come out? Because I've never heard about it. There's no copyright information. It was self-published by the artist in 2015, or the previous version was in 2015. So that's neat. And they used the alphabet design by uh, misogynist Frank Lloyd Wright. Not so neat, but I'm not mad about it. This is really interesting, and I, I need to stop reading it and show you guys the cards, right? Because that's what I'm doing right now, is reading it. It looks like this got published again in 2019. So yeah, that's neat. I've never heard of this, but I'm excited to see what's inside. Ooh, look at that. There's like a whole little story inside here. This deck is a guide for the 21st century seekers struggling to find insight and understanding in an urban environment. That's pretty freaking neat. That makes this a little bit magical. I'm not so mad at this this liner now because it has a story inside I'm gonna rip this liner out and cut that out but you know here we go <laughs> there's the urban tarot it says it upside down as well so I do really appreciate that I love the street map card design that's really cool I'm just gonna start like gilding my own decks I think because it it's like I got used to getting decks that had gilded edges or colored edges and like now when I see them 
ungilded, it makes me mad. <laughs> Not like mad mad, but like, you know, like I'm like, just, just a little smidge of foil on there. Make them shiny, make them pretty. That might just be like magpie brain though, like coming through strong. So let's see, it also came with this extra, a couple extra cards, which is interesting. Uh, this is all about the author and how she created the deck. And then this is a guide to the symbology in there, which is also neat. This also is like the same blurb from inside the book. So, I mean, a smidge redundant, but not unnecessary. Um, it is cool because I have these cool backs to use in a journal because that's what's going to happen to these. I'll probably collage on the front and then leave the backs as is. Maybe I need to do another like city witch journal. I don't need to start new journals right now. I'm in the middle of journals. But ideas. Um, and apparently all the suits got changed from like cups, swords, and all that to just the elements, which is also fine with me. That's very cool. Um, and then there's a infinity symbol for the major arcana, which is also cool. So let's see what's in here. Sneak peek. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. I, I understand now. I understand a lot more. Can, are we in frame? We're in frame. So first of all, <laughs> this is the pool, and I love this. This is great. This art style is so dynamic. Like, I love this. And it also looks like paper cutout art. I think it is paper cutout art. Like, that, like it's all paper piecing. And it might be done digitally, but it looks really, really great. And the up and the down arrows. Ooh, and her signature is still preserved there. That's really cool. Oh, that's my cat. I just heard like some skittering noises and she's just scratching the wall. So if you hear that, that's what it is. Um, at any rate, this is a very cool card. I love the little doggy. He's so cute. Also, I just assumed the gender of the artist and I don't know the gender of the artist. So it's their art. <laughs> That was my bad. I need to look that up. And then next up we have the mage. Are we close enough? Hold on. Okay, so I know it's a lot tighter, but I feel like, like I, I can do this for you. <laughs> but you guys just have to see this art style. It's so great. I love this. This might be my new obsession because I used to do a lot of paper piercing, like paper, pier paper piecing, not piercing. I mean, that too. I have a whole punch, but like, I used to do a lot of paper piecing when I was doing art journaling, and that's, like, how I got into doing junk journals. Like, that was my segue, art journal to junk journals. But, like, my obsession was to do paper piecing and, like, just paper piece together all sorts of characters and stuff like that. And this just, like, ooh, it gives me, like, nostalgia. I need to revisit this, I think. I need to go back to paper pier piecing some stuff. I don't know why I'm insisting on saying piercing. But here's the high priestess, and look at her. She's, like, a little bubble bath goddess, and I love that. This is a total vibe. It's a whole mood, and I'm here for it. I love it. It's brilliant. And look at the Empress. She looks so sweet. This baby looks a little crazy, but I feel like that's how most babies look. But look at her. She's so darling. Ooh, I don't like them. He's not my friend in this deck. <laughs> but there's the Emperor, and... That's terrifying, <laughs> but um, also like very on brand with uh, the current state of things. So, you know, a very accurate representation. We have the Hierophant. How cool is that? There's a lot of like dove imagery here. Like dove pigeon imagery, which is interesting. And look at this. This, like, movement here. Like, is it, sm like, smoke or fire or Cthulhu? No one knows. Should go faster. I'm going to spend forever looking at these. Here's the lovers. And I love this card. That's really pretty. It's, like, really simple. But, like, I think the candle does more work than the actual lovers themselves for the symbolism for the card. And that's really great. But also they're, like, underground, which is also very interesting. And then we have the chariot. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I think that gets like the bold nature of the chariot, the, the driving force, the action of the card like across really well. 
And here we have Justice. No comment. No comment because you're going to get canceled in a second. It's a police officer. Just no comment. Here we have the Hermit. And like, we're getting like potentially unhoused persons hanging out outside, but also Cerberus is there. So there's more to it than like what you see on surface level. I really love this. I love this deck, you guys. The art in this is doing the most. And here's the Wheel of Fortune. And I love like the little faces on the signage to get across like the potential chances. There's a, a little fortune teller. Of course, this lightning. It's all gated off here. That's really cool. I love the perspective of this too. And here we have strength. And she's giving me like librarian vibes. And I love that. <laughs> I love that a lot. And the fact that it's a statue and not an actual lion, like, that that fits for, like, the modern uh, setting that we find ourselves in. And here, here's the hanged man. And look at him losing all his monies. And his cell phone. <laughs> look at the little cell phone. <laughs> That's wild. The colors on this are outrageous. But look at that. Like, he doesn't even seem that upset. Which is very appropriate. Ooh, and here we have death. Sorry. Of course, it would, like, go all out of focus on the death card. Just to be extra spooky. Look at the bugs. It's so gross. This is wild. You guys, this deck is... This deck is very, very timely. That is insane to me. This is crazy. I love this card. It's upsetting, but I love it. And then we have art. Is that temperance? Yeah, I think it's temperance. <laughs> I don't remember my numbers, but I think this is temperance. Is it? Hold on. Let's look at the book. I really should learn the numbers of the cards, but yeah, you know, I got a lot, a lot in my brain already, and I don't know if I need more in there. I mean, like a little bit more. Ooh, the hangman is upside down. <laughs> I love that little detail. That is, that is very, um, it's very satisfying. <laughs> it's also very funny, but it was temperance. I was right. I was right. <laughs> and that's all that matters. So don't feel like a fool sharing stuff on the internet. I do love the switch from like paper piecing to traditional like paint style. Here, like adding that medium in to just enhance the theme of the card is very cool. And then you have like traditional art up against street art. This might be my favorite card in the deck because that's, that's amazing. Oh, and then one here we have the devil. And like you can see the little stick figure people like all the ones who gave into temptation. Look at that. That's pretty cool, guys. I love that. That says a lot without doing a lot, and that's pretty neat. And then here we have the tower. And if you'll just see, that is the Statue of Liberty beneath there. And this rising forth, spilling the water out, like some modern Tower of Babel. That's, um... Not that Babel spilled water out, just like the, the vibe, the vibe of Babel. But that's pretty neat too. And here we have this star. And she spilled her sprite. And there's a little Aquarian symbol. And look how pretty that is. Oh, this card is kind of sad. It's like all the garbage all like spilling everywhere. And then she's like trying to reach in. That seems appropriate. A little melancholy vibes. And then here we have the moon. And then, oh, look, another gator. <laughs> I just did my uh, sticky club unboxing and was like, oh, I never see gators. And then, like, they're just everywhere now. Well, look at that. That's pretty cool. 
I really love this. I love like the moon through the like the street hole, porthole. What do you call this? It's not a street hole, that's for sure. The, the sewer drain hole cap thing. Somebody smarter and faster at Google, type that in the comments because I'm going to forget by the time we get to the end of this. But I do genuinely want to know what that's called because that's shenanigans that I don't know. And I just called it a street hole with a straight face. And then we have the sun. Look how cute. It's just like in a little city park. Having the best time, vibing. Look at those people back there. This is very cool. Oh, and this is the Aeon? Aeon. I don't know how you say that. I hope that's how you say it. But look at the old timey dress and outfit on this memorial versus this modern day with the Ouroboros. And got the city under construction back there. That is really cool. I love that the details here feel very deliberate and like not just by coincidence, you know, like not just like, oh, this happens to add to the the comp position. Why are words so hard for me right now? Like it's not just things that are added in for composition, but like actually related to the meaning of the card. Like everything is very deliberate and I like that. And then we have the universe. And look how cool that is. She's like rising above the city. This cat's like watching her as she steps off. As she steps sh 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 As she steps off <laughs> this little, um, it's not a gargoyle, but you know, those things on the buildings. It's kind of like a gargoyle. But it's a bird. That's why I'm saying it's not a gargoyle. You understand what I mean. The thing on the building. And then she's stepping into the universe. I'm like, just look at you, girl. Getting all enlightened taking your higher self while the ground is still trying to keep you there. That's very cool. And now we're in the suits. And I guess they are still wands, but they doesn't say that on every card because every card has like a word for it except for the, I'm gonna guess the court cards. So let's see. And then like the little key card told us they're all assigned their element. So it has a little elemental symbol on top. You can see that it's different as it goes down. So let's see. So this is the Ace of Wands. It's a uh, giving Olympic torch. But also a wizard's wand. And I kind of like that. I like that. I like just the, like the ombre color effect in the background too. That's really neat. And then we have Dominion. This is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Very cool. And then for three of wands, we have virtue. So you got the fire department. Going into the fire. That, I don't know, this like color scheme for the backgrounds is really doing the work here. Like this is really cool. I really like that. A lot. Okay, weird cut. I needed more coffee. So here we go. <laughs> We're on completion. For the four of wands i don't know if i love having the wands represented in the center of the card every single card but i'm not mad at it either we have strife this little arm wrestling match little boys versus girls match on the baseball field which is interesting it's like in a sports bar it's pretty neat i do like that i do think i like when my like card number situation is a little bit more subtle, but like it doesn't bother me this much. So we have victory for the six, and I do like that. This is very cool. And like across a bridge too, it's, it's like a marathon. And we have valor. So look at that, little protesters with their cardboard signs. That's really cool. And swiftness. A little delivery guy. You can even see like the little steam coming off the pizza boxes. That's so cool. Dude, I love these cards, you guys. <laughs> this really might become one of my new favorite decks. And then we have Fortitude. Look at this guy. 
Uh, I was gonna say it, but I forgot all the words. But like you know, the little mailman's like pledge, and it's like rain and sleet and snow. I should know because my grandparents uh, or my grandfather was a mailman, uh, but I don't remember. <laughs> but that's really cool. Love that. And we have oppression. Say less. Like wow. It's a lot of a lot of social commentary in these cards, and I do really like that. And here we have the rock star and that's the knight of wands so it does say yeah so the court cards are going to have the words on them for like what number it is but it still has the um it has like an archetype for the for the court the knight we did 10 to knight Interesting. Okay. 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 I was like, wait, the page card is missing. So I thought I was like missing the page, but some stuff has changed. Cause look, here we have the knight. That's the rock star. Then we have the queen of wands, who's the public defender. And I love that she has like a cheetah, like a little leopard cheetah type animal with her. I'm obsessed, obsessed with the idea of women <laughs> owning giant predatory cats. <laughs> I love that. I love that she's the public defender. And then we have the Prince of Wands. And this is the journalist. And then we have the Princess of Wands. And that's the dancer. And I love her little hat. <laughs> so cool. And she also has a little predatory animal tattoo. And then we move into cups. So let me see the book. So I don't want to. I don't want to guesstimate and be wrong. So the knight here is blah 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 blah. That's a knight. The queen is the public defender. Blah 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 blah. And the journalist. Blah blah blah. John Stewart. And then. The Princess of Wands. So it doesn't actually explain who's supposed to be taking up the work of the page. Like it doesn't say if the knight and the queen are switching positions or which one. Um, which is an interesting choice. Because <laughs> now I'm like, do I have to learn a whole new card set? Like this prince and princess model, or is one of them supposed to be the page? Also, as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that she talks about the, or they talk about, I don't know why I keep doing that, um, that they talk about the model and then the inspiration for like the location in the city that um, inspired the card, which is also neat. It's also really nice to get an idea of like the information behind the art on the card because that can help like enhance your understanding of the meaning. Um, I just wish I understood the switch. It's hard to explain it if I don't understand it. Oh, it's a very different take. I wonder. Oh, okay, so the deck structure is based on the Thoth Tarot? Thoth Tarot? Um, conceptualized by Aleister Crowley and painted by Lady Frida Harris between 1938 and 1943. Um, it has the same emphasis on elemental association and draws inspiration from the older Rider Waite deck. Um, so that's what it is. The 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 Thoth Terra has prince and princesses type stuff. So I have to go look that up because I'm not familiar with that particular brand of tarot, but. I'm happy to have, like, the excuse to learn and a deck that, like, uh, serves that purpose. And I just realized how long I'm talking, so we're going to go through these a lot faster <laughs> because it's been a hot minute I've been doing this. So here we are, Ace of Cups, really beautiful fountain and some people hanging out on the lake. I also love the floral imagery on the water. And for the Two of Cups, we have Love. Look at that little meet cute at a coffee shop. How cute is that? And we have Abundance. I do like that. It's probably not my favorite of the cards, but it has like New Year's Eve celebration vibes and a cake. And then we have luxury, which like, talk about man spreading. 
<laughs> cookies and milk. It's very um, interesting, but I would I would define that as my personal brand of luxury because I, I don't have monies. <laughs> and then here we go, we have disappointment. And this is that broken down old china cabinet, flowers shattered on the floor, that's really sad. There's also more of that like floral sort of water wave design. And then for the six of cups, we have pleasure. I don't need to add to that. And seven, we have debauch. Never heard anyone just say debauch. Like debauchery. But debauch. Now I'm going to say it. I didn't know that you could break it down like that. There we go. There was no reason not to. So we have like a little Mardi Gras bead action going. Like a little bachelorette maybe. Because I think I know what those beads are. <laughs> and uh, yeah. That's an interesting one. And then we have indolence. There's a, the modern tarot card, or the original tarot card is in the back. But there you have the spilled over cup. And now that I'm done sneezing, we have happiness. We have a little happy family scene. And satiety. And I love that. A little pride parade. That's really pretty. And this kid looks like the kid from the sun card. And then we have the seducer. And look at that. So gross. <laughs> so gross. But then they have a little knight on there. Because it's the knight of cups. So who is seducing whom? Very interesting. And then we have the therapist for the queen of cups. Look at her. I would open up to her in a minute. Look at her. She looks so sweet. But she also looks like she's a little bit tired of your bullshit. She's like, just just do the work. Like, do what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> Don't keep coming here and telling me stuff. But I do like the little fish. And like how these ones have color. This side doesn't. This one I can look at for a while. That's a really cool card. And for the Prince of Cups, we have the filmmaker. And I love that. It's like a frame within a frame. A little Inception-y. It definitely works. And then we have the costume designer, which is a really good compliment to the filmmaker. You need both. I like how she's like dancing with her little her little dress form. That's so cute. You got a little swan lake action here. That's neat. And now we're in swords. So here we have the ace of swords. This is giving like Arc de Triomphe. Not French, so pardon that. <laughs> and a little airplane in the background to communicate the air. Some clouds. And this broken, like, glass mirror effect is really neat. It almost makes me feel like I could get a reflection off of the card. Like, that's how vivid it is. I don't know if it's picking up on camera like that, but it is really nice artwork to evoke that kind of feeling. And then we have peace. And look at this, like, penitentiary playground. Like, what the heck is that? That's outrageous. <laughs> With the sun shining in the background. You know everything in this park is hot. It's, it's hot. <laughs> that's wild. And then we have sorrow. That's, that's sad. That's really sad. And then we have truce. That's interesting. It's like the UN. And then defeat. And as a uh, person who grew up in Vegas, yeah, this is uh, appropriate. It's very appropriate. And then we have science. Science! Look at that. With like the evil scientists in the background. That's really vivid. I like that a lot. And then we have Futility. All of the Swords cards are making me sad, though. <laughs> like, I want to go through this faster because these cards are making me so sad. <laughs> but that's typical for Swords cards. And then we have Interference. The TV Interference, the TV Static. Look at that. That's bad cord management. Which I am also guilty of, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. And then we have cruelty. Look how sad. Aw. 
I do kind of like that there's like a little keyword at the bottom. It definitely makes it easier to like call up the meaning a little bit easier. This is Ruin. And it's this like gross moldy egg in a frying pan. This whole suit is sad. <laughs> and for the Knight of Swords, we have the Game Master. And he's like still playing chess even though this like piece is on fire. And that seems... That seems like a little bit overkill. Like I think you won. And then we have the painter. And I love her. I love this texture. That is so cool. Little sword in her her little water jug there. That's very neat. And then the hacker. Is it going from like creative arts to computer science? Which is very interesting. A little air conditioning back there. To keep all of his units cool. And speakers. A lot of shattered glass like imagery in this suit. Very cool. And the princess is the activist. And yeah, I love her too. She's great. Can do no wrong. Love her megaphone. The textures in this are wild, though. And now we're on the Ace of Disc. So I guess we're not going with pentacles. We're going with disc, which I guess makes sense in, like, a modern setting. You're much more likely to see disc than pentacles, but here we are. So there is the Ace. And you have Atlas doing the work. And then for twos, we have change. And I love that it's, like, reflected in the mirror, and you got the infinity symbol still there and three we have works and uh yeah i can't argue with that that's definitely work um there we go we're on to power and see i like this i feel like the the discs are blending a little bit more seamlessly into the background here Like becoming a part of the image as opposed to like this where it's standing about like separately from it but then five we have worry and that's too real also too real this 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 suit better not make me sad swords was hard to get through and then six we have success And, like, I wonder if, like, the he's receiving success as, like, a payment for his job well done. Or if, like, he's giving the success. Like, here's my little tip on what stocks to go into. And that guy's about to be rich off of his hard work. And then seven, we have failure. And that's, that's just interesting. Like, it's definitely giving, like, emergency signal vibes. I'm not sure it's happening right here. But he's like telling him, like, get out of here. I don't know. This one's interesting. Got to think about that. And then we have Prudence for this diligent uh, watchmaker doing his work. I do like that. And here we have nine for Gain. And look at her. She's just like basking in her glory. Look at her. This is her pool room. Go off. You did it. And 10, we have wealth. And it's all these little rings. That's an interesting choice. Little jewelers. And like even the, the light outside is shaped like a diamond. It's very interesting. Very cool. And then for the night, we have the gourmet chef. That looks very cute. He also looks very sweet. Like he's just happy to do his work. And he's like a master of his craft. And I want to eat all the veggies. I also might just be hungry. That might be like a reason. <laughs> I want to eat all the veggies. And then we have Queen of Disc. And look at her. She's just so happy. She's there with her family. She's like the matriarch at the head of the table. And like everything is like shiny and glittering. That's the abundance. Everything she worked for is coming to fruition. And then for the Prince of Disc, we have the Day Trader. I don't like this guy. I don't know what it is about him. I don't like him. 
probably just capitalism. But, you know, tis what it is. And lastly, the princess of DISC is the kindergarten teacher. And I love that. I love the representation for teachers. The little hamster cage. And the potato experiment. And then the little kids playing outside. And look, she's so satisfied. She's so happy. She's like a mess from these kids. But she's just like happy to be here. And I love that. I love that so much. And I love this deck. This deck is really cool, you guys. I really, really like it. I really enjoy it. I also am excited to like learn a little bit about like the 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 th like system of tarot because I don't know anything about it and I was not even prepared because I didn't even read that carefully <laughs> so that was a surprise and I do like to learn new things like always be learning <laughs> and um I'm excited to have that opportunity with this deck I also just really love this art style this is really like dynamic to me I'm gonna go look up the artist on Instagram and see if I can find their page and then finally figure out what their gender is so I don't live with forever guilt over possibly misgendering them and then I'm gonna give this little book a read and get into it but like tell me what you guys think what was your favorite card I also just really appreciate that this deck also has like social commentary and political commentary without being like too in your face about it and like I said I just love a good modern tarot I love having something that connects to like my current state of being because it's nice to like be able to connect to stuff that's like in the past or like, you know, feel super witchy by digging up like old archaic things. I do enjoy that experience, I absolutely do. But I also just like it when it's grounded in my current reality because it just feels a little bit more real and a little bit more present. And that's just me. Um, I know not everyone feels the same way. Um, a lot of people tend to shy away from like modern stuff. Like it will diminish their witchiness, which is interesting. And maybe I'll like talk more about that at some point if you guys are interested. Um, because I think there's a lot to be said about that. Um, I think there's, like, a lot of, like, gatekeepy things that, um, make people feel like they're not witchy enough. And then when confronted with those, you tend to lean backwards into the things that, um, feel older to make yourself feel more valid. And that's just, it's just not cool. You shouldn't have to do that to, like, feel valid. You should be valid in whatever you choose like yeah I could talk about that forever I'm not gonna do that now because this video is already very long <laughs> and I think I'm done for the day so if you made it to the end of the video um I appreciate your faces and I will catch you guys all in the next one till then happy crafting bye also look at all these colors I love it bye